Good evening, in Jesus' name. It's evening here at my house. Uh, and so this is the seventh Sunday of Easter, but it's also, uh, there's also a passage about the Ascension of Christ, so I'll think about that a little bit as part of my message tonight. Hope you're doing well. And so, uh, again, as we get started, um, please uh, take the time uh, to take some deep breaths with me as we center ourselves. Uh, in our prayers, uh, my son Eric had successful surgery to uh, hopefully make uh, things um, all right uh, towards the future uh, with the problem that he's had for a while now. Um, and uh, here we go. We bless the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. And we confess our sins before God, trusting in Christ's Easter promise. To you, O God, all hearts are open, to you all desires known. We come to you, confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth. For the sake of your goodness, in Jesus Christ our Savior, amen. By water and holy, the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth, and through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Holy God, hear our prayer. O God of glory, your Son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through your Son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So our first reading is that story of uh, the ascension of Christ in the, the gospel version. Or, excuse me, no, no, in the version with Acts. Right, so here we are. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that my Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, Jesus was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them, they said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. This is the word of God, word of life. And then in 1 Peter chapter 4, he writes, Dear friends, don't be surprised or shocked that you are going through testing that is like walking through fire. Be glad for the chance to suffer as Christ suffered. It will prepare you for, an, for even greater happiness when he makes his glorious return. Count it a blessing when you suffer for being a Christian. This shows that God's glorious spirit is, in you, is with you. Be humble in the presence of God's mighty power, and God will honor you when the time comes. God cares for you, so turn all your worries over to the Holy One. Be on your guard and stay awake. Your enemy, the devil, is like a roaring lion, sneaking around to find someone to attack. But you must resist the devil and stay strong in your faith. You know that all over the world the Lord's followers are suffering just as you are. 
But God shows undeserved kindness to everyone. That's why God appointed Christ Jesus to choose you to share in his eternal glory. You will suffer for a while, but God will make you complete, steady, strong, and firm. God will be in control forever. Amen. This is the word of God, word of life. And then uh, the Holy Gospel, as the word was given, um, excuse me, let me say this first. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the Holy Gospel, as the word was given to John in the 17th chapter. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I've made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the good news of Christ's victory. Let's sing, uh, Rejoice for Christ is King. Um, I don't, I can't quite get the melody out of the computer while I'm doing what I'm doing, so I'm going to sing it. Please join with me as you're able. Rejoice, for Christ is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks, and sing, and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. Our Savior Jesus reigns, the God of truth and love. When he had purged our stains, he took his seat above. Lift up your hearts, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. His kingdom cannot fail, he rules o'er earth and heaven. The keys of death and hell are to our Jesus given. Lift up your hearts, lift up your voice, rejoice again, I say rejoice. He sits at God's right hand till all his foes submit and bow to his command and fall beneath his feet lift up your heart lift up your voice rejoice again i say rejoice thank you <laughs> and so we uh turn to our sermon and the word is pray Anything that is worth doing is going to require some effort, of course. <laughs> that may be easy to understand, for we're pretty used to hard work. Yet there may be times when you and I are doing something that we're involved with when suddenly we realize just how much time it takes. Sometimes that special project that one has at work may just eat up more time than one would like to give. Now, we don't usually begrudge the time we spend doing something that we're especially passionate about. You should see what we do in our household, above all for Sandy, when we're planning one of our special trips. 
seeing as much of the world as we possibly could has made our family's life so much richer. What also requires effort is trying to stop doing that busy work we might get stuck with when, when we have to stay at a task that just isn't that rewarding. It is hard with what the world asks of us to just slow down. How often do you take the time to enjoy a leisurely meal? Is the TV on or, or is someone looking at their smartphone? Isn't this a good time to check in and see not just what we've been doing, but how we are feeling about stuff? Can one relax as the day grinds to a halt when we feel like we have to be constantly entertained? Now, on our anniversary trip, Sandy and I took along a book for marriage enrichment, just a chance to talk over some simple questions about life, our lives together, you know, general questions, nothing challenging. <laughs> Did we get to it every day? <laughs> uh, no. Uh, were there better things to do while we cruised the Alaskan, Alaskan coastline? Yes, but napping was important too. <laughs> it is a given for our faith that prayer is vital. The hour of worship can be said to be a prayer from the invocation to the benediction and being sent out into the world again. We certainly know that God deserves more than one hour in a week when we would pay attention to what God would say to us. I have to believe that prayer is sewn into our daily life like the stitches in a shirt. How can we keep it together if we are not joined to God in prayerful conversation? Yes, it is both daunting and comforting that we know how God hears all that we say and sees all that we do. <laughs> Even when I talk to myself, okay, <laughs> I like to think that it's a prayer. And as far as our daily activity goes, I, I like to keep in mind Paul's injunction from 1 Corinthians 16, verse 14, that says, Let all you do be done in love. So the gospel for the seventh Sunday of Easter is always a portion of Jesus' prayer for us, his followers. First off, that he does so is really just a good thing, as, as well as a good example. Almost all of our prayers are going to be for those we love, above all when they are in any sort of trouble or hurt or ill. Certainly our prayer list from any given Sunday proves that to be true. Now, while I'm choosing not to delve into this gospel today, what Jesus requests, uh, that we may be one with God and, and with one another, has to be one of the central actions of our faith life. When we are at prayer, we are never truly alone. Paul also said, when we don't know what to pray, Spirit speaks for us with sighs too deep for words. Now, Jesus had prayed for his disciples, and, and now in our first reading, they're prepared for their mission. The promise is, you will receive power. These women and men gathered in Jerusalem, waiting for Spirit to be sent, are going to be able to do so much through that spirit. Even so, with all the assurance that a word from Jesus can give, they are constantly at prayer, as it says. Jesus had given them power as part of their witness and healing ministry throughout Galilee, earlier on in, in their time together. Soon a new aspect of God's power will come upon them. Among the many things they have prayed about, patience until the time comes is one thing. Understanding of what has happened, that Jesus' suffering and death has made possible the new life 
is another. As the book of Acts unfolds, their time spent prayerfully studying God's word in the Hebrew Bible will bolster their mission. More than anything, the believers ask for boldness to replace the fear that came from having met enemies of God's will in the occupying Romans and false leaders who have used their power to control and put down others. When Jesus' word is fulfilled on Pentecost, the witness of Jesus' followers is going to be earth-shaking. Next week, we'll hear that many of the languages of the known world will be on the tip of their tongues. The apostles' time of prayer and study will further their understanding and thus their ability to preach Jesus as God's messenger of hope and freedom. Prayers for healing will change the lives of many who look to this new group for health and salvation. The disciples, men and women, will have new gifts of leadership to speak and serve as the church spreads out from Jerusalem to the ends of the earth. Now, the apostles will also have a different kind of kinship with the many and varied people that make up the nations of the world. Now, way back when, when God called Israel to be God's own possession, as written in Exodus 19, their purpose was to be a priest, quote, a priestly realm and a holy nation. In 1 Peter 2, the apostle elaborates on this calling of God that we were chosen, quote, in order to proclaim the mighty acts of the one who calls people out of darkness into God's marvelous light. So let our prayer for this worship today and into the future be that, one, we would be forgiven and reconciled to God and one another. That's our confession of sins. Two, that God would gladly receive our prayers for mercy and our praise for God's work. Three, that we would not only hear and understand God's word for today, but live in it and act in it uh, for the sake of our neighbors. Four, that Spirit would intercede for us, not only for our own sake, but for the whole creation that we're responsible for. That five, yes, five, that we would trust in the confession of faith, the Apostles' Creed, etc. Uh, six, that we may know peace. Seven, that we'd receive strength, joy, and hope through the feast that we share. And eight, that we'd go into the world ready to fulfill God's will that we've prayed for in the prayer that Jesus taught us. This hour of prayer sets the week's purpose into motion. That as the people of God in prayer and praise, we will love and serve all. Amen. And so the church prays. United in hope and in the hope and joy of the resurrection, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of harmony, as you drew your son to your side, you draw us to you and unite us with the planet and one another. Weave your church together in a web of mutual love for the sake of the world. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. As your spirit hovered over the waters of creation, so your spirit hovers over all that you have made. Bless the water that sustains the planet and grant wisdom to use it wisely save those recovering from weather disasters. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You empower your people with the fire of your spirit. Challenge activists and organizers, teachers and politicians, and all in leadership to speak a message of peace and justice. Lift up those devastated by war in Ukraine, Sudan, Yemen, and throughout the Middle East. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You care for all your children. Show your steadfast love to those suffering isolation, especially exiles, refugees, immigrants, or prisoners. 
break the chains of all held fast by systemic oppression of any kind. Comfort all who are afraid or suffering from any illness or injury. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks that humankind serves as your body in the world, stewarding your abundant gifts. Guide this congregation's leaders as they seek your will. We pray for our staff, Joy and Marcia, Richard, Barabel, and all our musicians and singers, Lori and all our teachers, Joe and our council leaders. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We also pray for all the situations in the world that people are hurting for in our country and uh, in all those places where uh, war, oppression is happening. We ask you to be with all those suffering from gun violence, for women and families, uh, for all those who seek justice, and the friends and loved ones who are in our hearts for Eric, Lori, Frank, John, Beth, Sandy, our homebound members, Lillian, Nancy, Agnes, Mildred, for Betty and Bunky, for those we think of in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You raise your saints to new life in Christ. We give you thanks for Helena of Constantine and all your saints who have given us glimpses of your redeeming love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Holy God, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and the grace of reconciliation in Christ, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace of Christ is always with you and also with you. Uh -huh. Please share that peace, as I always say, with those who are in your household or on our Facebook page. And so receive the blessing. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation today and always. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Hope you have a great uh, weekend and a good week. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye now. <laughs>